Ya está empezando a grabar. Está mi pues. Okay, we are going to start your speak and uh, I remember you that you have 15 minutes for presentation and five minutes for questions, okay? Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, okay, go, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable audience, good morning. So I will present uh, <coughs> my work entitled Numerical Investigation of a New Double Absorber lead-free lead free skate solar cell via SCAPS one, di one dimension. So the presentation outlines are given as follows. First, we start with an introduction describing uh, the progress and the limitations associated with thin film solar cells. Then we provide, we, we, we present the uh, solar cell structure based on double perovskite layer and several electron transport layers. And then uh, in the third section, we give the modeling methodology used to simulate our proposed device. The result and discussion uh, are given in the fourth section. And finally, we conclude with some remarks and future perspectives. During the last few years, uh, solar cells have been divided to three elementary technologies. The first one is based on monocrystalline silicon, which dominates the market. And the second one is based on the thin film photovoltaics using amorphous silicon, cadmium tellurium, and uh, several, several collagenate based solar cells. Now the emerging photovoltaic structures are based on quantum dots. Uh, <coughs> quantum dots, new materials uh, based on two dimension materials also, which can offer efficient, uh, high efficiency and stability not yet proven for the perovskite based sources. The main question is why using thin film sources? So, uh, we can see from this table that the silicon technology dominates the market with 25.6% uh, of efficiency, offering uh, a high uh, a high power of 16.9 gigawatt. On the other hand, thin film technology uh, can offer 22.6% with 1.7 gigawatt what uh, for the module uh, power. Basically, thin film technology can give prospect for cost reduction, low material consumption, flexibility, uh, flexibility using cultural production uh, and relatively high efficiencies. Thin film photovoltaics is divided into three uh, three basic technologies, which uh, are based on several building blocks such as amorphous silicon, cadmium tellurium, and collagenate based uh, based thin film. So uh, it exhibits uh, a high efficiency and low cost is demonstrated. However, uh, several problems are related to this. Te these technologies, such as uh, the, the stability issues, uh, medium efficiency, and the use of scarier elements, and and also toxic, toxic ones, the, such as cadmium. So the question now is why perovskite is an alternative technology. So perovskite materials can offer several advantages such as bend gap tenability, uh, high absorption coefficient, few microns of thickness, and uh, the low production cost. Despite these benefits, 
Several challenges are still associated with parallel sky sources, in which, in which we can notice the degradation related to recombination effects, optical losses, open circuit voltage deficit, and the poor quality of the interface between the perverse absorber material and the buffer layer, which can which can impose several challenges such as the voltage deficit, which is in between 0 0.45 to 0 0.7 electron volt, uh, which is high as compared to other thin film, thin film sources. So this is mainly due to the interface quality between the perovskite and the buffer, which requires severe improvements and uh, band alignment ma ma management. So the aim of this work is presented in this slide. So firstly, proposing a new perovskite source structure based on double perovskite absorber. The second one is a numerical investigation of the proposed structure using SCAPS 1D one dimensional simulator. The third objective is to investigate the effect of several electron transport layers on the solar cell performance. And finally, evaluating the performance of the proposed solar, st solar cell structure with respect to recently developed structures. So, for the solar cell structure, so this figure shows a uh, schematic of the proposed perovskite solar cell based on double absorber aspect and alternative electron transport layer. So the main idea behind the proposed uh, photovoltaic device is its own suggesting an, uh, an absorber film with two perovskite materials as shown in this figure with different thicknesses. So the first absorber is halide perovskite, while the second one is a tin-based free lead perovskite material. So also the proposed device consists of introducing various electron transport layer to enhance the carrier transfer characteristics of the solar for the modeling mythology, the use of a complex structure uh, with double perovskite layer and several electron transport layers can impose several and desired effects such as optical confinement, high density of defects, a complex interface between the electron transport layer and the perovskite absorber, which can make the analytical modeling uh, undetectable. So, we need for new numerical modeling approaches. So for this purpose, the device is modeled by based on uh, using uh, using SCAPS one dimension software in which the continuity and the Poisson equations are self consistently consistently solved. This figure shows the current voltage characteristics of several lead-free perovskite solar cells compared to that of the proposed design with double layered absorbers. So we can see from this figure that the proposed solar cell with double layered absorber shows a higher efficiency value exceeding 31% as compared to the conventional structures. So the proposed structure shows also an enhanced open circuit voltage and also an enhanced fuel factor compared to the conventional structure. This is mainly attributed to the use of double layered absorber promoting enhanced absorption capabilities and thus enhanced photogeneration mechanism. Also the proposed sector can offer enhanced open circuit voltage due to the use of re relatively high bent gap material tin based paper skate with 1.5 electron volt. To boost up the efficiency, the solar cell efficiency, we explore the effect of several electron transport layers on the performance of the proposed perovskite solar cell structure. 
with double layered absorber. So we can see that for, from this figure that represents the, the electron transport layer with pervoscate energy band alignment, we can notice that uh, the conduction band offset is high for several uh, materials which can degrade the performance of the device. So we have used several materials for the electron transport layers, such as tin oxide, indium gallium zinc oxide, ZNO, and titanium dioxide materials. So we can see from this table that that uh, the tin oxide material can provide the highest power convention efficiency of 32.77%, which is mainly due to the uh, to its low voltage deficit. This voltage deficit, is, uh, this low voltage deficit is related to the enhanced band alignment at the interface between the electron transport layer and the perovskite material, which can lead to lower combination effects and there be low losses. This figure shows the, the variation of the soil cell efficiency as a function of the thickness ratio between the suggested two uh, materials. So the optimized sector shows an enhanced power conversion efficiency of 33.6% with the thickness ratio of 0 0.9. So this improvement is attributed to the role of optimizing the double absorber film geometry, leading to enhance the absorption capabilities of the pervoscate soul cells. So for the conclusion in this work, a new pervoscate soul cell structure based on double layered absorber is proposed and numerically investigated. SCAPS 1D simulator is used to accurately model the soil cell behavior. The influence of several electron transport layers on the performance of the proposed solar cell based on double layered absorber is also investigated. It is found that the use of appropriate electron transport layers can boost the soil cell efficiency. It was also revealed that the proposed device shows excellent photovoltaic performances with a high power conversion efficiency of 33.6%, making it highly appropriate for the emerging photovoltaic systems. For the future perspectives, the present work can be extended by introducing plasmonic effects to further enhance the device absorption capabilities, also introducing band gap guarding, guarding E in, in the suggested double layered absorbers can also enhance the carrier collection efficiency. And lastly, the use of metallistic techniques such as genetic algorithm or particle swarm optimization can be can boost up the device performances by selecting the appropriate design the, the design parameters. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Let's see if there are some questions. For people that is connected, are there any questions? Well, let me start with uh, questions. There are no other people uh, participating. Uh, please, can you go to the slide six? of your presentation, please. Yes. Yes. Uh, we are not seeing it. OK, just a minute. Okay. Okay, that well. The the question here is uh, here you are uh, showing some problems uh, 
regarding your prescribed solar cells. So the question is that yes. it, in, yeah. your, in your study, that I understand is purely theoretical, are these all yes. these problems yes. considered for the solution of your uh, design? Can you please repeat your question? Okay. I, uh, my question is that uh, you are showing here some problems uh, regarding the first collect solar cells, okay? Then yes. The question is, uh, I understand you are making a theoretical study, purely theoretical study. Can are all these yes. problems that you, yes. you are showing here considered in this study? Yes. Yes, thank you for your question. So the main objective of our work is to enhance the the optical performances of the solar cell and also the collection capability of uh, the collection capability of the solar cells. So uh, the degradation related to recombination effects can can uh, can uh, impose several several uh, drawbacks such as the voltage deficit which is mainly related to the interface between both the electron transport layer and the absorber so in this study we have <coughs> we have we have investigated the effect of using alternative electron transport layer for achieving reduced recombination effects which can lead to uh, led to, an, uh, to a low voltage deficit. So the second objective is to enhance the optical performances of the proposed solar cell using a double perovskite layer uh, at the absorber film. So this can enhance the absorption capabilities and address the optical losses. So uh, after selecting the appropriate geometry and the appropriate electron transport layer, the efficiency is highly improved and uh, the highest efficiency uh, is 33.7%. Uh, okay. okay, thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Well, let me ask you another question. And your last slide. Yes. Can you go to the yes. last slide, please? Slide? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, last, the last one, where you are talking last. about methodistic techniques. Yes. Future works. Right. Okay, there in, in the last issue, you are talking about methodistic techniques. Uh, can yes. you talk about yes. those techniques, please? Metaverse technique, techniques, techniques such as yeah. genetic algorithm, genetic algorithm and particle swarm optimization. Uh, these meta are metaoristic techniques uh, that uh, uses random methods to optimize the device structure for achieving high efficiency. So. The objective function will be uh, the will be maximizing the the soil cell efficiency and selecting the appropriate uh, design parameters in our case such as the the uh, thicknesses of both layers or both suggested layers the appropriate ETL uh, electron transport layer and uh, uh, other parameters such as the doping and experimental parameters for achieving the highest efficiency. So this uh, technique, uh, this, uh, these techniques such as the genetic algorithm and particle swarm optimization can be highly suitable for the maximization of the device efficiency. That, that's a good point. May I uh, may, uh, ask you, are these yes. uh, metabolistic yes. techniques being considered yes. already for the design of these uh, kind of cells? Yes. Our lab work for for, for 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 the implementation of these techniques for the for enhancing the photovoltaic uh, uh, photovoltaic characteristics of several of uh, several technologies using perovskite or also collagenate or 
silicon silicon based uh, based uh, solar cells so this these techniques can be used for uh, enhancing the performance of several uh, uh, solar cells based on several technologies various technologies uh, are there some uh, references included in your report here yes you can uh, you can you can see my 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 scope is on my Google Scholar uh, Scholar uh, account. You can you can find several publications regarding the implementation of metallurgistic techniques for the improvement of several devices. Okay, Farati, time is over, and thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chan. Uh, we are going to connect to the other presentation. Yes. Diego Andres. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Diego Alberto Andres Arria. That is correct. Yes. Okay. All right. You're going to be the next presentation. Let me advise you that you have 15 minutes for a presentation, and the last five minutes you are going to be for questions. Okay. Okay. I will thank advise you, you okay, when you. five. There are five minutes left. Okay. Thank you very much. Go on, please. Uh, what can you see there? Can you see my presentation? Yes, it is on. Okay. Okay. Uh, now. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Diego Alberto Andres Chavarria. I will present my uh, scientific article under the name of effect of the CDTE cadmium telluride absorber layers thickness synthesized by the RF sp sputtering on the performance of CDTE cadmium telluride photovoltaic windows. Okay, so this presentation is all englobed in one aspect to see how we can reduce the thickness and cadmium telluride to make a possible application for photovoltaic windows. As, as we know, and many articles prove that cadmium telluride absorbs around 90% of the available photons in two micrometers of thickness. So now for possible applications for photovoltaic windows, this thickness must be reduced at least around one micrometer for have a double use uh, to produce electricity and to serve as photovoltaic windows. Now this configuration is constituted by substrate glass with a fluor fluorine tin doped oxide, a thin layer of zinc oxide, another layer, an N-type layer of cadmium sulfide, the absorber layer as cadmium telluride and the contacts of copper and gold. Each, each of them with the respective thickness here approved. Now, as the table one shows, these are the conditions that were grown for each layer, especially the cadmium telluride layer with that 80% of watts of power and a substrate temperature of 300 degrees and a varied deposition time between 60 minutes to 240 minutes. So that's one, two, three, and four hours of deposition time. And we used uh, argon flow of 10 standard cubic centimeters per minute. 
Afterwards, the glass FTO cadmium sulfide cadmium tolerated heterostructures were exposed on an annealing treatment under cadmium chloride vapors for one minute at 380 and 390 Celsius using a closed space, space sublimation system. Now the characteristics of these deposited films, starting with zinc oxide, it has a fan gap between 3 and 3.3 electron volts, ex an hexagonal ferrocyte heterostructure. It has a high conductivity and a high electron affinity. Cadmium sulfide has a band gap between 2.42 2.66 electron volts. Has a similar structure as uh, zinc oxide, a hexagonal versate structure. It has a high electrochemical stability and excellent electronic properties. Now for the absorber layer, the band gap it's, it ranges between 1.42 and 1.5 electron volts for a phased centered cubic structure. For a hexagonal structure, the band gap increases between 5.3 and, and 1.6. It has a high value of absorption coefficient and a long-term performance stability. That's why we chose these three deposited thin films as a heterostructure for our solar cell. Now, what we concluded at the first time before the annealing, before the thermal annealing, annealing with the uh, cad cadmium chloride vapors, we can see here a diffractogram where it shows an, a mixture between a hexagonal and cubic cadmium telluride basis obtained with a preferential orientation for 0, 0, 002 for hexagonal and 111 1, 1 for cubic. This is stating that there's a mixture between the two crystalline structures. The characteristic peaks are also shown of fluorine oxide in with a preferential orientation plane on two zero zero. Now, afterwards, we used uh, the by shear equation to calculate crystalline size, crystallite size, giving us a maximum of fifty four nanometers. This happened because as the uh, full width and the medium height reduces, since more spotted atoms they can reach the substrate surface and it has a better atomic arrangement and that's why it has a greater time to diffuse throughout the film. And that's why we we obtained a 54 nanometer crystallite size for the thickest um, uh, thickest film for of two microns. Now the lowest films that we we got were for 520 nanometers. Uh, of course, these this uh, thin film was semi-transparent, whereas the 240 minutes of two microns, it was uh, mostly opaque. So that's why we continued to research on the 16 minute nanometer, I'm sorry, on the 520 nanometer structure. Now, using the Ramanin spectroscopy, we found out uh, three vibrational modes, one on the longitudinal and acoustic mode for cad cadmium telluride and the two acoustic longitudinal acoustic modes for also cadmium telluride. As we can see with the highest crystalline uh, uh, structure was for the 60 minutes deposition time. And that's where we moved on. And after the cadmium chloride thermal annealing treatment, we we saw that it was an induced change of uh, phase from hexagonal to all fully uh, cubic structure with a preferential plane of 1, 1, 1. Now, this arrangement was due to the treatment where the atoms were in a most stable uh, structure. These two showed uh, were for uh, 60 minutes and 120 minutes of deposition time. Now, using also the by shearer, we calculated the, the crystallite size and the biggest uh, crystallite size that we got were for 58 nanometers. 
Now this is a notorious enhancement, and it was this was uh, due to the chloride uh, to the cadmium chloride annealing treatment that we saw earlier. Now also the microstrain was uh, enhancedly reduced to 3.8 uh, at 10 and the negative 3, and also that dislocation density in decreased to 2.97 at least. Now using same analysis uh, for the thin films deposited at different times at 60 minutes, 120 minutes, 180 minutes and 240 minutes. What we saw here is that there were a uh, varying uh, of the grain structures. The, the least uh, structure that was uh, good for us was for the what's for the 120 minutes. minutes. Five minutes left. Thank you. And it exhibit a more uniform uh, activity on the grain size on the 120 minutes, 180 minutes. Now afterwards, after the kneeling at treatment, we saw an, an, a big increase, a drastically increased uh, on the grain size for the 60 minutes uh, after the kneeling treatment of cadmium tolerate thin films which exceeded almost 200 nanometers of size. Uh, whereas the 120 minutes of the position time for cadmium telluride, it's still, we still saw uh, different grain sizes, not as homogeneous as the 60 minutes deposition time layer of cadmium telluride. Now, what we saw here on the transmittance spectra is that as the thicker the layer, the lower the transmittance. And because due to the mixture of hexagonal structure and cubic structure, we saw an increase of the band gap between 1.3 and 1.4 electron volts. And after the annealing treatment, where the phase, the, the structure changed to a cubic, whole cubic structure, the band gap reduced to 1.48 and 1.49 electron volts. Now these estimations were made through the tau method plot. And finishing here, uh, I present you the, the JV curves of the solar devices that we created, that we fabricated with a 1.5 AM. That means that's 100 milliwatt per centimeter uh, a squared centimeter, centimeter squared using a contact area of 0 0.07 centimeters squared. Now the biggest uh, the biggest efficiency that we got was for 4.12% for, for the 60 minute uh, uh, deposition time for cadmium telluride at 390 degrees Celsius for the cadmium chloride vapors uh, to thermal treatment. Here, here I present you the photovoltaic properties of the solar cell. And as you can see, it has a, it has a lowest resistance series and the highest resistance shunt, giving us a higher field factor, a higher density current and a higher open circuit voltage, giving us that's why we got the 4.12 percentage. Now, as a conclusion, we we grown the theme, uh, cadmium telluride theme films through RF sputtering and we analyze it structurally, optically and morphologically. Now the structural evaluations that we revealed that increasing the time, it also increased our crystallite size, the microstain and the dislocation density. And thanks to the cadmium chloride treatment, it demonstrated an enhancement on the degree of crystallinity, showing a better structural properties and reaching a crystal a grain size higher on 200 nanometers. And as I stated, the maximum efficiency was for 4.12 uh, percentage and this performance demonstrated that there's a viable uh, possibility of using photovoltaic windows with a lower cadmium telluride layer. That will be all for my part. Here are a few of my race references used on this article. And thank you very much. OK, Diego, thank you very much. Let me ask you uh, if there are people here in the room or uh, people who are disconnected. Are there some questions?
No questions there. Uh, then yeah, let me ask you. Uh, let me ask you a few, a couple of questions, please. Can you go to table for you show table two, please? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> table two. Yes, that that one. Nice. Yeah. Okay, there you are showing uh, density, dislocation density, okay? And you're yes. showing that yes. as the temperature increases, your uh, dislocation density is uh, going low. No, going, yes, this is going low, okay? From 4.85 to 3.26 when you are making an anneal at 240 meters. My question is, uh, is there any time, limiting time to make that annealing? Uh, I, I mean, 240 minutes is a lot of time. Can you increase that time? Uh, yes, we can yeah. increase we can. Uh, the time for for the thin film, for the deposition time. But uh, since we are looking to create a semi-transparent uh, thin films, to have a, a double use as photovoltaic windows. Increasing that time would mean that transmittance would would also be lower and absorption would be higher. And that means that uh, we would have opaque windows instead of semi transparent. So that's why we decided and opted um, at the position time between 60 minutes and 240 minutes because this would mean that uh, the, the lower the deposition time, the higher the transmittance because the thickness is uh, is smaller. So that's why we opted from two microns, which was, uh, as we can see here on the transmittance, the transmittance for 240 minutes was already decreasing uh, much, much higher than the other ones. And in decrease, increasing the thickness would mean decreasing the transmittance. And that would mean that the light won't pass through the windows. And that's why we wanted uh, a double use of uh, a window that can generate electricity and that can also have partial light enter the, the room where the photovoltaic window is. Okay, and uh, so you have to find a trade-off between those parameters. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes. that is correct. Yes. And Jeff, yeah, have you already met that uh, trade-off? Uh, yes. What we found was that the deposition time for 60 minutes for cadmium telluride absorption layer gave us a semi-transparent. Um, device. And that's why uh, we opted to search uh, the good, the, the best conditions to grow the layers between 60 minutes and 120 minutes. That's why we found that uh, these layers gave us a semi transparent layer because there were uh, almost 500 nanometers. Now making this was also a challenge because uh, all, uh, using uh, cadmium chloride as a thermal annealing treatment was um, um, being at the treatment uh, higher time would mean also that the layers could uh, could sublimate. So that's that that was a problem because the the lower the thickness the the smaller the thickness we would have a greater chance of sublimation so that's why we opted for one minute of annealing treatment with different temperatures now for future experiments i would recommend to to still search 
uh, different ways of annealing treatment that are not that aggressive to the absorption layer as is uh, cadmium telluride. So that was a big challenge. Thank you, Summer. Thank you, Summer. Thank you for your presentation. Okay. You're very welcome. Okay. okay, so today I'm going to present the work which is based on this CAP simulation and for the CIC thin film solar cells. The title of my work is the SCAP simulation on CIC thin film solar cells and the effect of the defense, where I, which I am going to present. So these are the outlines uh, containing the introduction, objectives, numerical simulation. Simulation details, the simulation results, conclusions, and acknowledgements. In starting from the introduction, so CIGS thin film solar cells is the second generation of the photovoltaic device technology. Like normally, it is called the thin film solar cells. So, in thin film solar cells, uh, normally they use the compound compound uh, semiconductor. So here um, we, are, uh, we are going to use the CIGSE, copper, indium, gallium, selenide, uh, material. So the, the structure of the solar cells here I am in figure one, you can see the, it contains the, the glass substrate, the glass substrate or the, the substrate, back contact, which normally molybdenum is used as a back contact to store the charge carriers. Uh, and the CIGSE absorber layer, where the photons is absorbed. And then after the CDS, uh, it is called like buffer layer, which is also which also form the PN junction to the CIGS layer, and also passes the uh, photons uh, to the uh, CIGSC. Helps to passes those uh, towards the CIGSC absorber layer, and then after zinc oxide window layer, this one is uh, like uh, we. Uh, it is also used to pass the uh, photons from the full like, photons to the CIGSC. Absorber layer, and then zinc oxide, amount of zinc oxide, uh, transparent conducting oxide, and then after uh, front contact. So this this is the basic structure, and you can see the here this the figure is the CIGS thin film solar cells. So why CIGS? No, like uh, in photovoltaic technology. So it has several advantages. Like uh, the first one is the direct and flexible band gap means you can. Tune the band gap from 1.04 to 1.7 electron volt. So, depending on the photons energy, you can you can tune the band gap and have the better better performance. And the another one is the high absorption coefficient. So that so that like uh, the material used in the solar cells is like around micrometer, no one or two micrometer is sufficient to absorb the photons completely. So it has some record efficiency in the solar cells is like 23.4. Uh, I think now it's 23.7. And uh, for the large area, 670% to square solar cells, it is 19.6%. Furthermore, advantages are like uh, it has the excellent stability, high radius resistance, and also like uh, you can con um, interconnect monolithically the modules from one module to another modules. So here, uh, normally, we like uh, uh, discuss about the defects, like uh, 
Normally in semiconductor in recombin recombination mechanism, there are three types, radiative recombination, auger recombination, softly layered hull recombinations. So radiative is like uh, recombination by emitting, by, uh, of the excited electrons by emitting photons. And for the auger is like uh, by uh, emitting phonon, photons and phonons in the, uh, to the another, from the electrons from same band, balance band or conduction band like what uh, you can consider. Then subtly red hull recombination, which is uh, related to the trap assisted, or you can say defect, defect recombination due to the defects, like uh, recombination of the charge carriers. So for the CIGIC, here is the, like, uh, you can see the query, normally there are four reasons, like near to molybdenum, uh, back on deck, and CIGIC at earlier, near to the, the PN junction, and space charge region. Now that there are four reasons normally it is considered, but in our study, like uh, since this two part is far from the space charge region, and what we are going to do is like uh, related to the near to the uh, junction, like CIGIC, and in, uh, space charge region, like uh, inter uh, interface, and the CDS proper layer. So, what like main objective of this work is? Optimize the CIGIC in thin solar cells, like the parameters such as thickness, carrier concentration, band gap of this, like normally for CIGIC, uh, by varying these parameters to obtain the maximum efficiency as possible. And then after we'll we'll focus on the effect of defects at the observer layer, at the buffer layer, and the CDS CIGIC interface. So, what is the numerical simulation? No, like. Uh, Normally, why we use no in solar cells like or other other part also like the main like the simulations all numerical simulation all are related with the computer no computer based program like the you you can you can facilitate to analyze the parameters so it contains like several advantages uh, such as cheaper and quicker than experimental work so it can help to pre predict the results. Uh, before doing the experimental work. So it is like helpful to start the experimental work so it prevents the loss of the some materials or, or other time no, also. Easy to optimize and inter can interpret the semiconductor device physical phenomena and behaviors, predict the outcome change in the material and design to solve the basic semiconductor equations. These are the advantages. So in the simulation details, like as I mentioned, we, I use the SCAR software uh, to simulate the CH thin film solar cells, which we have performed like based uh, like uh, standard conditions of solar spectrum of AM 1.5G and the ambient temperature of 300 Kelvin. So these are the parameters for the for the CIGIC, the parameter thickness, band gap, affinity, all uh, etc. All these are parameters for the CIGIC. CDS buffer layer, zinc oxide window layer, and amount of zinc oxide, uh, transparent conduit oxide. So after that, I also had uh, some defects like uh, here, here we normally vary the defect density and carrier capture cross section. So these two we vary for the CIGC CDS and CIGC uh, CDS. So all uh, what uh, what all these things differ? No, like uh, that can affect is the diffusion length. So for the charge carrier, uh, in order to have the high efficiency, the diffusion length should be high. Like the, the charge carrier, for example, electrons should move the as maximum distance as possible so that like it can be collected. So this is the equations which, in cal which can be calculated from the diffusion coefficient and the lifetime. So simulation results. I included all these results in one hand, but uh, starting from the first uh, for for the first optimizing process, what I have what I have done is the varying the CIGC thickness. So here we uh, vary the from one to ten micrometer, and the efficiency, like you can see from the table I have included in the table here, the table that the efficiency is slightly increasing from one to ten micrometer from 21.29 to 24.39%. So why it happens? Maybe due to the, 
with increasing in thickness, the absorption of the photons in the device increases. Then the, this is the reason that it increases. After that, we fo uh, focused on the different band gap. So since the band gap is directly related to the open circuit voltage, VOC, so with increasing band gap from 1.0 to 1.7, uh, it is you can see the increases, but but the with the increased band gap, the to in order to absorb the photons in the solar cells, the the band gap like the energy value should be higher than the band gap value. So with increasing band gap, the photons with high energy get the greater than band gap is lower, which decreases the solar circuit current. So it and as a result, like here we have found in 1.4 electron volt is high efficiency, 25.76%. Then we, after optimizing the band gap, we focus on the CIGIC concentration, like carrier concentration, and we vary from 10 to the power 14 to 10 to uh, 5 and 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube. And we have observed that with increasing carrier concentration and it 5 and 10 to the power 16, we have the best, uh, best like uh, highest efficiency, 26.82%. Then after that, we we vary the thickness of CDS. Since the window layer or buffer layer, so the thickness should be lower as possible, so that the maximum photons or um, photons can enter the enter to the absorber layer. So like can absorb, no? So here we just focus on 2200 nanometer. So here it doesn't show much difference, but greater than 100 nanometer can decrease because it can prevent the photons as well as increasing the series resistance of the device. Uh, so yeah, here further uh, further uh, study is needed, but at least like we have just kept varied, no, like we, we don't see any difference because normal thickness of the CDS like uh, used in these solar cells is around 50 to 80 nanometers. So, okay, yes. Uh, and then CIGC band gap, like, uh, sorry, then we focus on CDS concentration. Here the, we have varied like the 13 to 20, and it is seen maximum efficiency is more than 10 to power 70, 10 to power 70, well, which is greater than 10, 5 and 10 to power 6, which I have obtained. And uh, he, he, we can see, the carrier concentration getter of the CDS getter in the CIGSC can enhance the uh, depletion layer of the depletion layer of the device, so which improves the collection of the uh, which reduces the recombination and collection of the uh, uh, collection of the charge carriers. We vary the zinc oxide like parameter and zinc oxide and element of zinc oxide, and like uh, here we couldn't find any difference in change. So after that, we uh, this is the optimized efficiency of for the CIG thin solar cells, which are 10, 27.32 percent. Then we after uh, then we focused on the different like uh, recom de like defects defects in the observer layer, CDS buffer layer, and CIG uh, and CDS CIG interface. So here we have varied the defect density in this case and carry capture for section uh, for section for uh, for eight absorber layer. So it is seen that the you can see from here like 10 to the power 40 uh, for like 50 of the defect density the efficiency is started to decrease. So why? Because uh, with the presence of defect density, it can it can have facility to to get the alternative path for the, the general charge carriers and also like uh, the the uh, localized energy state can be found in the balance balance states no so the, because of that like uh, with general charge carriers with uh, the can become mine with increasing the defect density and in the carrier capture cross section here, like it is seen, like um, we have varied from 10 to the power minus 20 to 10 to the power minus 12. Uh, the efficiency is the, like the solar cell parameter is started to decrease after 10 to the minus 13. So with increasing now, like centimeter square. So from these, like uh, with increasing the carrier capture cross section, the columbic attraction between the 
traps and the charge carriers is enhanced and as a result decreases. Similar uh, pattern is found for the defect density and uh, character for the CDS buffer layer and if, as for the and then also CDS interface. It's like uh, all these all these uh, place, and for example, buffer layer uh, interface, all these uh, with the presence of these effects can decrease the server set parameters. So here we have like optimize and then we have discussed about the presence of the defects density. So this, this study can can be helpful. No, like for example, defects like for example, vacancies, interstitial and other other defects present in the because the CIGS is the compound semiconductor. So a it might have like about grain boundaries problem. All these um, problems can like the defects can can reduce the or can be combined the, the generates as carriers, no due to due, carriers uh, due to the photons. So so it is uh, like uh, it is helpful to organize the best phonon best uh, device and helpful to do the experimental work. So I would like to acknowledge the people from Simba staff. Uh, like currently, I am doing postdoc in uh, UNA, so I also thankful to the uh, people from the UNA and CC Congress, same staff, on a seat. Thank you. Any questions? People connected, are there any questions? Okay, so let me ask you uh, something. Can you show the that? No, no, no. Yes. yes. You are showing there. Uh, sorry, in the response, the maximum efficiency obtained from six was twenty-seven point thirty-two. And in the slide that you show, uh, the the uh, by the maximum obtained efficiency, no. First of all, second. Yes. Third. Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. Sir. There are talking about twenty-seven point four. <laughs> Can you explain that difference? Yes, like uh, the difference is main difference. Like scaps is one dimensional. Like we can, uh, we are not like including other uh, like uh, dense uh, parameter. No, like for example, for example, what we have to hear is uh, thickness, uh, mobility, and uh, current concentration. Yes, like band gap, mm -hmm. uh, infinity. So it is like in the SCAPS software, like uh, it is not included, for example, resistivity, other types of defects, but not in dense and dense, like for example, vacancies, then boundaries, other things. And uh, well, although it is not obtained 23.4 percent, but like for example, for single junction, so I said like maximum we can obtain 33, no, like 33 percent. But uh, as with this these parameters, like this is the this is the parameters like what we have like for example five micrometer for CIGSC, CDS is 50 nanometer, zinc oxide 50 nanometer, and the also this one also 50 nanometer. Maybe with these parameters, like the parameters they use might be different for the uh, or we can say also that every lab has different environment, no? Like there is some, uh, the quality of the materials all are different. Yeah. So that's, that may be the reasons. Maybe if we can have like basic uh, parameters with this SCAP software, if we can include in the experimental, that might can get more than that sense. But also when means that the the things they have obtained is they have uh, they have uh, different environment. No? The quality of the each material is different. So definitely. Okay, and, and it's, uh, this is I understand this is a uh, theoretical work. Yes. So, uh, do you have in mind how this work can be coupled uh, with technology? Yes, like uh, uh, in I have also like we have done in this one work is I have done in single stuff. Well, I have I have also I have deposited CIGSC and CDS. And basically, normally to my two materials I have I have worked on 
like this one is for the chemical bar depression and this one is for the hybrid depression method no and i have included this parameter obtained parameter what i have obtained parameters to the simulation it was obtained like uh, i think for the cigsc 23% Theoretically, means mm -hmm. the parameter what I have done experimental with these two parameters. I needed to work, means work on these two more two materials mm -hmm. so that like uh, to check no experimentally or theoretically and also I need to complete the device it's how we get the uh, experimentally what is the problem no and uh, what I need to because sometimes in the surface because of the uh, environment of the lab like the surface can oxidize no mm -hmm. so we need to also get. Uh, do the surface treatment so that we get the quality means uh, in surface like there will not be a more more uh, extra limits. Is there an effect? Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias.